I think first of all I'll just do an introduction. Um, so the, what was the title of the video today? <laughs> just stop. Do you know what? I was going to name it Doing Cocaine. I couldn't think of a title so I was like ah just do something like Doing can Cocaine. <laughs> I don't know why it popped into my head. Um, and then I thought oh no that will get undue attention. Cocaine. I might as be get barred off YouTube. They got a lot of policies that watchers don't know about now. Okay, so just stop. Just stop. <laughs> just stop. Just stop. I think that's too loud. Just stop. Um. Well, this really is the subject about forgetting yourself. So you might think it's about knowing yourself or getting to yourself, but actually it's about forgetting yourself. If you um, write to me by email, which most of you won't, because you don't know my email. But if you do, my emails are often called forgetting something. Forgetting. I won't tell you the rest of it. Anyway. <laughs> forgetting. Um, so you think that this is a jewel to be found. But it's actually about forgetting yourself. And in forgetting yourself, it's there is a finding of something free and intimate and beautiful. It's not about being a particular way. It's not about being nice, enlightened, I mean, these are nice things about having infinite love that you want to share to the world. These are nice things, and I'm a bit of a hippie, so I can have a tendency towards that. But it's not about that. It's about forgetting the little you, just totally merging with what's happening. And what's happening is who you are. Now I've got to make this somehow fit into just stop. So to know yourself is to forget yourself. Yeah, that didn't come out as profound as it could have been. To forget yourself is to know yourself. <laughs> Sounds a little bit flaky. Um, how else to put it? There is nothing that you can hold on to. Nothing. That's where all your problems began. It's trying to hold on to life. Yourself, your belongings, your things. I think you've achieved and it's never going to work. You are never going to win at life.
So what is it? We, we're not stupid. We know what it is that we don't want to let go of. What is it that you don't want to let go of? That you want to hold on to? There's nothing in this life that's going to give you what you look for. So maybe you've finally found the perfect partner and you're afraid of losing them. It always comes like that. When you think that you've found something in this world, then the fear will come in about losing them. The perfect situation. Perfect life. When you fear, you'll lose it. But it's never in whatever you think it is. Haven't you ever noticed that you've worked hard to get something and then you get it and it's never really the payoff that you expect? And it's not about intellectually working yourself out, working out all your problems and becoming a perfect version of you that's not conditioned. That's an attachment as well. Attachment to emotional release, which can feel fantastic. Releasing emotions and understanding yourself and a habit, an addiction to constantly being focused on yourself and your feeling and what you feel and where it came from and who was responsible? And that's not going to work out either. You're never going to get to the end of that. It's like pulling pulling the wool from a jumper, you know, and you pull it and the jumper keeps undoing. But this is like the endless jumper to try to work yourself out. You're never going to be able to be this perfect person that you hope you'll be, that never gets angry, never feels shy, never feels scared. It's never going to work out. That's not what you want. Just like you don't, what you want isn't the home or the family or the kids or the amazing job. What you want is presence always, no matter what, no matter how much you think it might be in that. The body has got natural wants. It wants to eat, it wants to have sex, it wants to make kids, but they won't give you what you truly want. They won't give you the I am. They won't bring you rest, which is what you want. Your rest is your nature. It's that which is looking out now. It's that which is listening. It doesn't belong to you. You don't exist. You're a formation that's appearing. what you seek is what you are. All that worry that you have about getting the right job or the right lover, that will happen. On the human level, it's really wise to understand what you want, to focus on that rather than focusing on all negativity and hellish mindsets. But on the ultimate level, it never brings you home. Once you've got it, then something else will start. You'll worry about losing it.
On the human level, however, it's important that you know what you want and you focus more on that. Most humans are focused on the human level of what they don't want and then it produces lots of pain to be always focused on what you don't want. You're maybe not even aware of it, so so say if you get a girlfriend and you really love her and then you begin to focus on not losing her, so you do all these things for her. And then you're focusing on what you don't want and that's painful. It's not a wise way to act. So say if you buy a house in all these forest fires, you buy a beautiful house, your dream house, and then it comes to summer and there's lots of fire, fire, forest fires in your house, in your area, and then you keep focusing on not wanting it happen to your house. Or you earn loads of money and become super rich and then you focus on not losing it. Whereas a balanced way to be is to acknowledge these things, but to be more focused on what it is you want in an expansive way, in a greedy, selfish way. I want my partner to feel loved and happy. I want to feel loved and happy. I am loved and happy. These are the thoughts you want to recondition your thinking mind to think. But that conditioned thinking mind, that thinker, isn't who you are. That thinker is not the one that gets enlightened. It might change. It might recondition itself in the process. But what this is, is a movement back to that which is beyond. That. And it's not just an intellectual recognition of awareness. It's an in energetic shift from being contracted and tight inside the body to expansive. Consciousness isn't looking from a place. The I am isn't located in a place, it's in all things and is everything. Everything is empty and full simultaneously. Having the experience of a human, but the human isn't you. When you're identified and when you're in lots of negative thinking, like negative thinking can happen if you're free. Um, so there's certain things that I try to recondition myself about, or if I see a habit come up, then I'll try to recondition the thinking there. So it's not about reconditioning the thinking it's that this helps relax the person so when you're identified what what is happening on an unconscious level a really deep cellular level is a seeking for pe pleasure and trying to avoid pain and that seeking for pleasure and trying to avoid pain um, encourages the thinking mind and it encourages emotional instability because your life is based on the lie that you are this person and that you've got to get a house, get a wife, get children, travel the world, go on holiday, have less work in order to be happy, free. And that encourages the thinking mind. And it drives the thinking mind a bit balmy because it keeps thinking about getting these things and getting obsessed and getting stuck on the thoughts about getting them or obsessed on the thoughts about what will take them away. Somebody will steal your money, a hacker, or steal your identity, whatever it is that you fear. And then that's that seeking in this mental energy, and then the mental energy creates havoc in the emotional body. And over years and years and years of this investment, you begin to feel really uncomfortable. And then you get into this subject and you think the person is the one that's going to get enlightened. But you've never been that person. It's been an energy and an idea that's contracted, giving the appearance that you're that person. And it's this movement back to this expansive freedom, which can happen right now if you're in hell or in heaven. If you've got a more balanced person or less balanced person, it's this expansion back to what you are, which is everything right here, right now. And this everything is totally and utterly empty. But it's love. It's full, it's love, and it's empty, and fresh, and pure. And then the seeking energy comes, 
and the person believes that's true so the seeking energy comes that you've got to protect your house from the forest fires and you begin to get obsessed thinking about these forest fires checking it and then you keep encouraging that thinking process by checking the internet checking the fires checking the speed of the wind direction of the wind what houses have been burnt then you watch programs on it and your mind gets obsessed with the subject and, and it's addicted. It keeps going in that direction. You can't break it. And you really believe that something will be taken away from you if you lose your house. Whereas as you begin to expand and grow on the human level financially and with family, you'll realize nothing is it. You think, yeah, I get the house and when I move out of the apartment, the rented apartment, I'll finally be able to breathe and it'll be mine. But it's not like that. You'll never feel like something's yours and that you'll own it. But you can still get negative thinking, free or not. The thinking happens. It's not about having a silent mind either. But I, I am aware that focusing on what you want makes you a more balanced, happy person. And focusing on what you no, don't want makes you more unhappy and more likely to be swayed by other people or to be manipulated. Not necessarily, actually. You can be focused on what you want and still be manipulated. Um, that's not true. Sometimes I summarize psychology and it's so complicated, the human dynamics. So I always take it like with a pinch of salt. If it works, if it resonates, if it changes something, the human dynamics, then listen, but then also be open to drop it on the human level, on the non-duality level, I can't go wrong because firstly on non-duality you can't quite say it, but what I'm pointing to is so freaking clear. It's like clear cut, there is nobody experiencing this and who you are is everything. But that's just words, the words aren't right, but that's generally the gist of it and there's no hearing and toing and throwing and boop, 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 boop. You're also nothing as well, but by saying everything, you imply that you're nothing as well. Otherwise, you'd be saying one limited thing. And it's not all this bullshit that nothing comes first. That's a sexist idea. Because not, n nothing is the masculine and everything is the feminine. That's traditionally how it's talked about. And a lot of teachers like to teach that nothing is prior to everything, which is a crazy idea because nothing doesn't exist, so how could it be prior to everything? It doesn't exist, it never exists. There's only ever nothing and everything. And it's just so, so typical that, as a, that even in, even in non-duality, the masculine comes prior to the feminine. That's very much like Adam and Eve as well, in the Garden of Eden. The woman was created out of um, Adam's rib. You have one without the other. Nothing doesn't exist, so you can. it can't be prior to everything. It doesn't exist. It never exists. It never happens. You can never have nothing. They can only go together, one with the other. There can only be nothing with everything and everything with nothing. It's like the yin and yang sign. So say if everything disappeared into nothing, nothing happened for um, billions and billions of years and then something happened again, that nothing wouldn't exist, so it would be instant. It wouldn't be a period of a billion years. It would be instantaneous. If you think about deep sleep, 
your experience of it is that it doesn't exist. That you fall asleep, okay, there's the dreaming phase, and then once the dreaming phase is gone and you've gone into deep sleep, then it's instantaneous waking up again. There is never non-existence. There is never anything prior to existence. Existence is empty and full simultaneously. If nothing came before everything, then it would imply there is a duality. It would imply, imply there's one thing that is over the other. And everything is nothing, but nothing is everything. And it's not just me that says this, a lot of speakers say it. And I understand what they're trying to point to. It's e and it's easy to say, nothing, nothing, nothing. Like it's easy to point to and it's kind of fitting. This world came from nothing and we'll go back into nothing. But it doesn't work like that, that's for human and mental. OK, 